Hey guys, I'm back. So we've played a game of Men Who Would Be Kings and I played a game of uh, Rebels and Patriots. And I wanted to touch back on these two rule sets. Um, Daniel Mercy is an author, main author in, well, mostly in, in Men Who Would Be Kings, but he's also definitely had a hand in Rebels and Patriots along with uh, Michael Leck. These are both Osprey books, uh, uh, war games. Very, uh, I'll get into that in a minute. But, uh, we're going to kind of wing this as usual, no script. I'm going to use the magic of editing to uh, clean up any kind of tangents I go off in the middle of nowhere. But um, I just wanted to, as I said, I just wanted to touch back on after playing both games and just give my thoughts and maybe either confirm or contrast uh, my opinions going into it. Um, first of all, these games are, you know, real. These, what that people refer to as the blue book. For Osprey, they're they're easy to get into. They're not expensive. They're not difficult to learn. Um, I I am no means an expert of this. I'm I'm basically sticking to these Daniel Mercy games because he did he started you know I started uh, with Lion Rampant Second Edition, and he happened to write that. And I saw several other of you guys playing games of both of these. Um, so. I just kind of uh, followed that pathway there because of just uh, that's, that's probably one of the best parts for me about miniature wargaming is one uh, playing different time periods, trying out different rules, um, and the luxury of trying rules from the same author is uh, for me. Um, I don't have to think about it too much because thankfully, um, uh, especially in this case, this gentleman has kept. Uh, a lot of the similar rules, so I don't have to worry about confusion, um, which is, uh, <laughs> I know some of you guys are probably a lot sharper than I am, but uh, getting confused on the different rule sets, like especially jumping back and forth between chain of command and bolt action or, or something similar, General Day Arme and Valor and Fortitude and Black Powder, um, you know, you're you're still playing the same time period, but they're completely different rules. So for this brain, it's going to cause some confusion. This is kind of nice, uh, which is kind of relaxing for me. So it's, I'll, I'll enjoy it. It takes off one less stress of screwing up completely and then realizing I've been playing the wrong rule for, you know, the last three turns. I'm like, oh, <laughs> can't wait for those comments on YouTube. Um, so uh, if you didn't know, this one's built like in the 1880s, uh, mostly imperial forces from either, you know, France and England and America, invading uh, less technologically savvy countries, of course. And Rebels and Patriots goes from like the French and Indian War uh, up to the Civil War. Um, I mean, the, just to, to state the obvious, many would be kings, extremely bloody, um, horrifically, <laughs> horrifically bloody. Uh, which is cool, um, you know, just one-to-one, -one you know, shooting. So when you get to someone like me who's not going to follow the rules and just do a 24-point warband, which these guys prescribe, uh, I, I get around that a lot by um, playing a solo-played multiplayer, uh, basically, command structure. So um, these, these rule sets, including uh, Lion Rampant, discuss, you know, how you can have three or four guys on a team and you all get this certain amount of figures so I'm like oh okay so I'll just uh, I, I like to expand my sprint, uh, skirmish games to borderline you know uh, battalion and company level <laughs> battles so uh, that's great I have the I have, I'm blessed with the uh, table space to um, to play a large game and uh, I like to take advantage of the fact I love painting miniatures Sorry, my dogs are losing their minds upstairs. So, um, why not have a big game and uh, enjoy the heck out of the, all the terrain and all the space we have so you can have that much more fun. So, so because of that fact, things kind of worked out the way I thought they would. Um, with Men Who Would Be Kings, I'd, I'd have like, I had a, I think I had some 36 man units or something. So everyone's shooting. Uh, you get 36 shots. They're redu removing casualties at a one-to-one, -one, so every kill is like blowing somebody away. It's it, you know, unless you're in cover. Uh, so it was very simple, 
to wipe out an entire unit of guys without any, without blinking an eye, without even rolling that good. Um, so, uh, what what limited that from not becoming an absolute slaughter fest where one team would just wipe the other one out in the first uh, in the first turn was the pretty awesome command uh, and personality traits uh, done by random randomness, which kind of creates command friction, which really brought a lot of flavor to the game. Um, I might have felt a bit frustrated at some points, but that's, I think, as a commander uh, commanding troops on the battlefield, they're not robots. Uh, there should be some level of frustration. Um, when your guys don't do exactly what you do, because I mean, is that those famous quotes say, you know, the first, the best played battle plans go to hell when the first bullet shot, um, or something similar to that, because it happens. Um, it's it's you know, it's it's just the fog of war, the friction of war, the whatever whatever word you choose to call it. But um, it's really really uh, apparent in this game, and uh, it can be difficult to get your guys to do anything. I think the, uh, the uh, I, think, I can't remember which side it was, but I basically had an artillery uh, piece that was in a great shot uh, for the, sorry, for the Confederacy. Uh, the, the battery was never able to even engage the entire game. They just sat there. Uh, just kept failing commands just because I had, you know, I rolled up all the commanders randomly and they had this sadist that had basically intimidated the heck out of his, uh, troops and they hated him and they wouldn't follow a command so um uh, instead of a you know command friction being done in a two fat lardies game with your card not coming up for that that can happen a ton i mean you can have a you, you I, i've done it and i'm sure a lot of you people have played two fat lardy games like sharp practice have uh gone back to your deck to see if you've even placed that particular card in the in the deck because it's not coming up uh that, you know, the Tiffin will come up or the Tempest Fugit and sorry about your luck. And then it does it like six turns in a row and you've got a unit sitting there and you just, you can't get anything done. Um, I do play with a lot of the uh, the flags when I play two Fat Lardy's games. So I, I'm still able to move a lot of units and it wasn't as paralyzing as many would be kings. But uh, it happened and, um, or it happened, excuse me. So I enjoyed this. Um... I'm definitely going to play another game of it. I'm going to play probably a lot of games of it. Um, uh, yeah, it's good. So I, I highly recommend this. I know it's one of the highest. If you watch like Little Wars TV or you watch other guys' channels or, or if you played them yourself, Many Would Be Kings is an awesome game. Uh, I maybe not played in the Civil War, but uh, if, if especially if you play it, uh, you know, Especially, I've seen a lot of great games in the Zulu, and then I think uh, uh, Don for Boots on the Table, he plays the uh, the uh, the stuff in the Boxers Rebellion. Um, it's I think it's really perfect for those where you have not so many uh, British troops up against hordes of uh, of natives, and uh, and they just basically it, they just don't have enough bullets to kill everybody. So um, it's it. It suits itself to that. Um, that might be something. Those time periods, I might be something I'm be interested in painting in the future. But uh, it's a great game. I just wanted to try it out in the Civil War because why not? Um, you know, um, these games aren't what I would consider the most realistic. These these styles, um, but uh, I don't know. It, it's not really, I'm not, I don't really go for, I want some realism, but I don't want, uh, you know, I'm not here to do a, like a complete copy of, or a, a real life scenario. Uh, I don't want it to play out exactly the same. I want, I'm, I'm here to play a game with toy soldiers. So, so I'm not really, I'm looking to have fun more than anything else and looking to, for you guys to enjoy it too. So, um, these rule systems do that and they don't break the bank um if you're you can play with a small model count so the entry to play is not bad and if you want to get stupid and get expandability uh just stick around and we'll see how far we can go 
Um, I felt like I broke sharp practice because I just kind of ran out of the cards, but then somebody suggested to me using a real deck of cards in place. Um, so I might go back and try that too. Uh, I do have the deck of cards down here for Valor and Fortitude. So um, um, that was an idea that I thought of once I already decided I was going to try um, these particular rule sets. So um, Opinion of Made to Be Kings, phenomenal, great game. Uh, simple mechanics, I read the book twice. I, by turn two or turn three, I feel like I had a hang of it. Uh, you know, no, it's very quick, it's very easy. Uh, it's similar with the same author, having the same rules for all these. So if you played Lion Rampant, um, or Rebels of Patriots, it's not a, it's not, it's very easy to get into this and just to try something different, just to have something fun. And then the command traits were a blast. Um, all right, so enough of that. Going on to uh, Rebels and Patriots. Um, I was more nervous with this one because I thought, um, just from what people had already told me, so I tried to keep my opinions uh, uh, to myself before I even got into it. Um, but saying, you know, some people were, were down on this. This was not, in any, any of the reviews I saw, this was not on the radar for being one of the better games from uh, the Osprey Games books. It was always Many Would Be Kings was like number one or, or Lion Rampant. Uh, just in the re reviews I saw. I, um, and then, um, so I was kind of like, oh God, this is going to be tough. And uh, it was a bit difficult at first, uh, just because uh, at range, it's harder to kill somebody. Uh, you have smaller units. I had just played a game, you know, a day before <laughs> where um, I was literally blowing people off the table without even trying it. So it, it might have been smarter to try this one first. I don't know. But it's, you know, who cares? Um, but it ended up being phenomenal. I really enjoyed it. Um, things I like about this was, um, one, it's designed more for the time period I was playing. So that worked out well. Uh, two, it was, of course, similar. Three, I like the the, uh, the 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 character building inside of it, which is fun. Um, I was always a I was a big D and D player back in the day, so I like the I like to develop the characters, and I liked MMO games back when I used to play computer games a lot. So that part of it is awesome, and then having some friends of the channel and and my son and uh, on there too is kind of a uh, in an avatar form uh, made it a little bit more fun. Uh, for me, and I really was excited when um, uh, Doug and Mike's characters didn't have uh, massive uh, drug addiction problems or alcoholics or something like that. So uh, I rolled better too. So that really kind of made it a big deal too. Um, the character, the casualty removal wasn't as fast. Uh, we'd have some, I'd have some huge, you know, hand-to-hand -hand battles where I thought, you know, oh gosh. 20 guys are going to get killed in this one. And just maybe one guy got picked off from one side and two from another. Um, and that was kind of weird. Um, just because I thought, you know, like, oh, usually when 24 guys get together with uh, swords, bayonets, and guns, usually more than one guy gets killed. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it happened. But the, the, the neat part was it was... Um, uh, I had more control of the troops. I had a bit more tactical um, decision making just because I wasn't getting um, blocked all the time by uh, negative traits that seemed to be very easy to get in uh, Men Who Would Be Kings. Or, and I was able to concentrate fire as I was learning the rules and see what was working within that particular rule set. I was able to adapt my game style and uh, was able to break down, uh, you know, a force, a particular force, or concentrate on a certain area where I could basically, uh, tactics would have an impact on the game, which was kind of cool. Uh, I guess 
you know, the, it was seemed very even. It was going back and forth. I thought the, especially on the, uh, the Union uh, right, I thought the Union had it pretty much wrapped up. And then the Confederacy just kind of was able to get a couple units in the right place, was able to fire down to the middle and uh, got a couple lucky rolls. Um, as in this game, you wipe out forces by wiping them out. They go bye-bye. Uh, you kill off everybody, and it's very seldom that there's any kind of moral, or mor sorry, morale, it probably always moral breakdown, but morale breakdown uh, that causes units to retreat. Rebels and Patriots, it was more, you know, you get that first pin, and you kill off a couple more guys, then you throw, you get that permanent disordered marker on them, and then you basically force them into that third uh, morale check, and they failed it, and you, you run them off the table. And so, from what I know of, uh, you know, Civil War battles, that was a time period I chose to play for these, uh, there was a lot more guys that ran away than there was killed. A lot more guys that died of disease than were, than were uh, killed by bullets. Um, so, uh, thankfully, we don't have to play against dysentery and uh, malaria and typhoid fever and smallpox because uh, that would uh, that would straight up suck. I appreciate the fact that units were getting broken down by continual pounding and the degradation of morale, and then they would a unit would break which would cause a cascade of units around it, which I, you know, um, which you'd see uh, in, in movies, of course, of the time period and books. And then that would cause a, a mass flee at that point. So that was what was great about this, I thought. Um, it started very slow and it kind of just built up to a crescendo of really good, climax at the end which was which kind of what you want from a book you kind of want from a story you kind of want from a movie um it'd be great if it came out of the gate swinging the whole time but you gotta you know <laughs> you gotta get there first so especially when you're playing on a bigger table it's you know you, you can maneuver a little bit and you can do stuff and i didn't do everything tactically sound i wanted to try out rules i wanted to show it to you guys i wanted to show it to myself to learn so so that's it. Um, so I would, you know, uh, maybe not everybody's a fan of these these games, these type of games. You can see how small they are. Um, but I highly recommend them. I think they're great. They're very entertaining, uh, especially for you guys that are playing with a friend. Um, uh, I would play more with, you know, my buddy James, but I really enjoy a big game, and it's difficult to get him over here uh, with us both having kids, both have worth working, and both doing all this stuff, just like the rest of you guys. You know, you got your real life going on. And uh, I see a lot of guys that, like, you guys go to clubs or you have somebody over. It's hard to get a, a, a full game in that's massive in, uh, in one day or in one sitting. Um, so these type of games lend themselves to that because they're designed for small-scale skirmish games uh, you get together with a buddy and uh, knock it out and maybe have a couple drinks or something like that or whatever whatever works for you on the side while you're talking and it it, it won't dominate your mind because you won't be looking up charts the entire time and uh, you can have fun and you can play some historical warfare that's really quick and uh and that's it it's not a big investment of time or rule book stuff or units so um that's great and you also you get the, the fun of character development with this one you get the fun of uh just trying to command complete uh moral uh morally depraved individuals try to command them to uh, do stuff in this one too so that was um both of which give you command friction but if you're looking for a game that basically just blowing everybody away, this is it. Uh, pretty awesome. Um, if you're looking more for a slower paced game that instead of just 
wiping everybody out and killing everybody. Uh, that measly will break down a unit slowly and then you know force them to run and like which might be more realistic. I don't know. Um, th this game is for you. Plus, this one's got the character development in it. Um, so that's all I got. All right, hopefully that made sense. I'm gonna go back and edit a lot of that, but um, I'm definitely gonna be playing these games again in the future. Uh, my big plan for my ACW is uh, to keep expanding it. Um, I'm, I, there's a couple units in here that weren't, and I like to, when I do play a rule set, I like to uh, explore the entire rule set, especially unit types. So, um, you know, the shock infantry, the heavy cavalry, uh, I want to get more of the light infantry involved. I think they were in both of these, um, more in Rebels and Patriots, I think. Uh, so I'm going to expand um, some of my miniatures, get a chance to paint more uh, Union and Confederate troops, which is great. You know, getting more guys on the table is awesome. I, it, I, I do shudder. Um, uh, thinking about uh, many would-be kings and having more units on the table because uh, they're just woo, gonna blow some people away. Uh, I don't think I'll be adding any more artillery. I think two guns is enough, but I definitely want to add shock infantry. Infantry. I want to add um, uh, and more zouaves. So, and then I might take a pause again, like I originally planned. Um, when I, because I thought I was done with the project with, because uh, I, I had my nine commanders for uh, sharp practice. So I was like, yeah, I'll stop here. So yeah, so I'll expand a little bit and we'll see how it goes. Uh, up next, I'm, you can you can't see the entire table. I've I've kind of rearranged the table. Um, uh, usually I kind of run a, a really wide game. Um, this one is going to be, um, what is this, seven foot by 10 foot, kind of a cube almost. Um, and I'm gonna do a, a lion rampant game. I rolled up the scenario and I, I got the one like defend the undefensible. So uh, the scenario is going to be, um, uh, the Aurelians won that last battle. They've uh, taken the wine and the bourbon barrels and taken them back and they've kind of holed up in a, in a kind of small area here, small walled, town which is off so you can see off to the front here and uh they're gonna have a force in there and then we're gonna have closing in forces of timordia to attack them and the rest of the Aurelians coming in in support and trying to get there in time before that falls uh winging it as usual so hopefully it's a good game i am gonna dabble and I'm, i've uh I've always liked Lord of the Rings and and, and some fantasy stuff. Um, I never played any of like the Warhammer Empire stuff or um, stuff like and uh, any really other games like that. But I do have the uh, Dragon Rampant book, so there's going to be more Dragon Rampant in this Lion Rampant game. Um, I'm going to have it in more. That's a, probably the main one of the main reasons I did this whole uh, medieval. Um, time period on a fictional uh, uh, world of my own creation is because I wanted to be able to do things like this. Um, if I wanted to just have a, a regular medieval, uh, you know, knights in armor battle, I could do it. If I wanted to have, you know, spell class, uh, spell casters and clerics and uh, sorcerers and stuff like that in there, <laughs> Here we go. I can do it too. And uh, yeah, I think I lucked out. I didn't even know that a Dragon Rampant existed. So um, this kind of leads back to the original conversation about, you know, Daniel Mercy having his hand in both of these rule sets. And he's also in Lion Rampant. Um, I can continue on with the same style of game and uh, not be confused. Um, also, going to adapt, adopt, excuse me, the Rebels and Patriots command structure, uh, sorry, officer building thing when I do my two mercenary commanding ar armies too. So, uh, they will be in this, and if they win, I'm going to use honor points and have them gain in rank, and if they get to a certain honor points, 
uh, they can get extra traits and then I can develop those gentlemen. So I get the uh, game within a game, which is uh, always entertaining. I have to entertain myself. So uh, what have I been doing this week? Uh, I've been painting. I've been painting and I've been painting Perry miniatures. <laughs> What else? I love the Perry Brothers are my favorite. Um, I hope they're hope you guys own a lot of Perry Brothers too. Uh, these gentlemen are the war. Well, if you don't look at the sorcerers up front, don't look at them. Uh, well, they're actually they're actually going to be priests. Uh, that kind of fits my fictional world better. Uh, Perry War of the Roses mercenaries. I painted them to be heavy infantry. Uh, for the mercenary commanders, so now they'll have three groups of knights, and they'll have uh, each of them will have one group of twelve uh, of infantry too. So you've got a mix of pikes, and I took some of the weapons uh, from the War of the Roses foot knights, and I because that's a great kit. Oh my gosh, that's a great kit! And uh, I was able to I had plenty of extra weapons, and I kind of distribute them out, and I did some kit bashing with arms. To make them look more heavily armed, and uh, I really like the way they I like the way they came out. It's kind of fun. Um, I'm not the best painter, so we're not going like gonna go get a camera and do this 360. Uh, these are designed for the the tabletop, <laughs> and that's where they will stay. Uh, the only kind of painting video I, I will ever do, and I plan on doing, is um, uh, is just speed painting uh probably french legere which i'm gonna do or i'm gonna do here and i'm gonna start after this game um and i'm gonna basically just record me painting all these guys sprue painting them and then i'm gonna play it at like a, a way faster speed and i will talk to you guys while that's going on and try to be halfway entertaining maybe and then touching base on what's actually how i do things uh and I take a very uh, Russian World War II military kind of, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I think, uh, uh, point of view with my troops. It's more of a uh, quantity has a quality of its own. I like to have a lot of guys on the table. Um, I, if you haven't seen my Napoleonic games, I get kind of stupid. So, and I want to continue to get more and more stupid with that. Um, I think I'll put an order in, too, with... Um, Bacchus miniatures, and I've got the rest of my what I want to do for in this campaign, the Lion Rampant campaign. Uh, I've, I've gotten troops from Bacchus in six millimeter, and I'm going to do a um, uh, a game of Hail Caesar with that, um, with the new rule set from Hail Caesar, which I'm excited about, and that'll be in six millimeter. So I'll have to get some terrain and stuff, but. Uh, yes, and that, once you get into, like, Hail Caesar and get to these, you know, that gets stupid big, uh, especially when you're playing six millimeter, and I'm planning on putting another foot on this table, so we'll be playing, uh, 16 by 7 foot games, uh, yeah, I don't even know how big that is. I'm gonna do the same, I've also decided I've moved away from the Plastic Soldier Company, which I thought was great, but I, um, I do not want to get into another, uh, I've had an epiphany. I do not want to get into another uh, having six millimeter, you know, ten or fifteen millimeter, twenty-eight millimeter terrain and everything else. I'd I'd rather uh, just have two different sizes because the six millimeter stuff I can actually use for battle tech too, which is kind of nice too, um, like trees and stuff. So. Gonna play, I'm gonna Bacchus has got has really pump has really increased their uh, their Russian armor and I think they're continuing to do so right now. I think they just have T seventy twos and T eighty fives and then the IS twos, which is a good place to start. And they have plenty of infantry and guns, so uh, I'm gonna do that uh, rapid fire stuff uh, in that. So we'll have giant battles, uh, which will go back and forth with my. Uh, chain of command and bolt action uh, in Narva. Um, James is doing a, a phenomenal job. He's making, he's he's geeking out on his uh, computer drafting uh, cartography program he's got. And he's making me maps uh, that I'm going to send to uh, Deep Cut Studios and get custom like six by four 
neoprene maps of all these things he's making. He's made me uh, a map for the Shark Campaign, um, which so I can get rid of my cartoon-looking one. Uh, he's redone um, my Bluegrass Campaign for the Civil War. He's done a 1862 specific for this area. Plus, he broke down specifically the Battle of Perryville, uh, which I'll do that too. And uh, he's also done the Narva Bridgehead and all the all that stuff, all the roads and all the towns. And I think there's one. That, oh, he's he, right now he's working on uh, northern France, southern uh, Belgium in uh, 1815 for my Valor and Fortitude which is gonna turn into a Valor and Fortitude and a General Day Armée II uh, back and forth campaign too. So that's, I'm excited about that. Um, so yeah, and James and I have made a, we've made a stretch goal. I know I had a video at the beginning of the year saying I wanted to, uh, I laid out my road map for uh, this year for miniature wargaming. Uh, we're, next year, we're gonna, we're gonna go we're going to go for it. We're going to do a one-to-one, -one, six millimeter Civil War uh, Battle of Perival on the battlefield, uh, on the Perival battlefield. Uh, I got to call, a, I have to go down there and talk to him, make sure it's cool. We're going to, I'm going to build a table. I'm going to try to make it as accurate as possible. And we're going to just try to get out there. I didn't even decide what rule set we're going to do. But we're going to get out there and either use Pickett's Charge or Black Powder and have a huge Civil War battle and film it on location at the battlefield. And then uh, and then uh, get it out to you guys. So that should be fun as heck. Uh, I don't know if people are going to come out there and laugh at us. We're going to get pooped on by birds or, you know, trying to get the weather right. It's going to be fun. But it's we talked about it last night, and uh, he's fired up for it. So, uh once I get, you know, most of these goals done for this year, it's going to be immediately start working on troops and uh, uh, get all those six millimeter for the Civil War done. Um, at some point after that, will probably be the kickoff for the entire six millimeter six uh, campaign. Um, I do want to start like how I did with the Peninsula War and just start playing back at Bull Run and try to fight as many of the big battles all the way through. Um, they won't be as specific as I want to get with uh, Parable, just because Parable is like 10 miles to my west or something. I don't know, I don't, probably it's like 10 or 15 miles away. So I feel like I ought to do something just because we live right near the biggest battle in, that happened in Kentucky during the war. So that's something we decided to do, and he lives in Parable, so it's perfect. Um, the other the other thing I have to do this year is the the 28 millimeter uh, Japanese stuff. I'm gonna probably go with Warlord. Uh, their miniatures. I'm probably gonna do something similar, like I'm doing with Lion Rampant and Dragon Rampant with that, and uh, and uh, have a little bit of uh, Lion, a little bit of Dragon Rampant in that. I'm gonna do like a fictional Japanese uh, campaign map. I'll have James build me something, um, and we'll go from there, just battling from town to town. So very similar to this. Uh, hopefully at a smaller scale, but you never know. Um, I think for my big battles from now on, I'm planning on doing, you know, six millimeter Civil War, six millimeter Hail Caesar stuff, uh, six millimeter either rapid fire or O group. I don't know which one. And then it, I, uh, if I, if I'm not a biggest fan of the rapid fire reloaded, I want to try the second edition one, um, rapid fire. I can't remember what it's called. It came out several years ago. I think Dom and a bunch of you guys played it 15 years ago, but, uh, it looks cool. It looks simple. I think it'll be easy with the, the present rules, but uh, it's nice that there's different versions you can go back to. And it's been around, it's a rule set that's been around for a while. So, uh, I can, we can try it out and it'll be fun. But, uh, and I definitely like O Group, so um, we try it all. But be, I want to have the whole combined arms thing on the table. Uh, Bacchus has the miniature range. Uh, I mean, they've got mortars up to uh, 152 millimeter howitzers. So uh, the ground scale 
on a 16 by 7 foot table with 6 millimeter, uh, you can get stupid. Uh, just in my mind, I feel like I can get really dumb, and you can have multiple attacks across a wide front. Uh, it would be interesting to calculate what the actual ground scale would be, but I, I really feel like you could have artillery pounding and a big battle over here and people moving over here. Uh, it, it could get really ridiculous, so uh, that sounds perfect to me. Um, oh, these... Sorry, I think, I'm not sure if they're even in camera anymore. Um, these wizards, I think they were with what they were coined as, but I'm going to use them as priests. Um, were from Frostgrave. These are great sprues. If you ever, I literally enjoyed these. These Frostgrave wizards. They have uh, one with guys, one with girls, like Wizards One and Wizards Two. A uh, lot of different variation. I, I, I sorry about that. I used a very small percentage of the the pieces off the sprue, but you could just make unique figures. Um, they were kind of cool. Um, I hadn't painted like this. I don't think ever. So it was, uh, it was interesting. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. There's, there's rules for spellcasters in uh, Dragon Rampant. So I'll just modify some of the names a little bit probably. Uh, just on my computer at work and uh, print them off when I do my armies um, just to make it more mine. But I'm basically going to follow the, the gist of it. Um, Got a couple other surprises for the game just to make it fun, uh, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'll go over the, I'll show you the table, and I haven't quite nailed it down, but I am following the scenario. This is the second battle in the five-part series um, uh, that they lay out in the back of the Lion uh, Rampant book. Um, so. Uh, Let's, we'll see how it goes. I think the, the Time Wardens are attacking this time. And uh, they'll be trying to just secure this uh, uh, compound up in here. So, uh, got more troops coming too from... Uh, I've got some like, English in infantry from Agincourt, from the Parries. And I think I've got some uh, uh, foot infantry from the War of the Roses coming too. So definitely going to increase my a number of archers I'm going to have in my billmen. So, uh, yeah, so that, that'll be fun. Uh, maybe I have to add a fourth commander on because I'm just getting too much. Uh, the one thing about Lion Rampant is if you have one guy commanding too many things, uh, once you get out of his command sphere of influence, and if he fails, it automatically shuts down all of his orders for the rest of the turn. Um, so it's nice having multiple commanders to uh, pick up the slack. So he still gets some friction from command control because maybe somebody fails, but it's not like he fails and you just sit there and do nothing. So um, I think that's it. Um, both of these are great, and I like Lion Rampant too. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing uh, the new... I never played any Hail Caesar before, but I've played a lot of Black Powder. So I'm looking forward to trying Hail Caesar. I know they're similar. Uh, I'm glad uh, they've got that second edition out with some changes too. I hope it's good. Uh, I've watched reviews and it looks good. And of course, a lot of you guys play it. So um, I'll probably show you this map real quick and just scroll around and show it to you. And then we'll come back and say, see you later. So the plan is to, uh, this to be the, it's like, I think the battle's called, or the scenario's called Capture, Defend the Indefensible or something like that. So here are the uh, bourbon barrels uh, from the last game, and you can see Brother Maynard's wagon back there. Uh, there'll be a small force of uh, Eurelians defending this. They're kind of, they hold, they held up on this big hill. It kind of dominates the, uh, the scenery of the battlefield. It's not a bad hill. Uh, two new buildings that I've had for a while. There's the Panteo collection from uh, Charlie Foxtrot. Colin is amazing. I love his models. They, I mean, these things are just solid. Um, I paint all my stuff gray just so I can use it, and it looks like the same town. Um, it's very common in Kentucky to have gray buildings uh, just because so much bourbon is made around here. Uh, you get this whiskey mold, I think they call it, so um, it kind of 
camouflages that so people just don't want their houses to turn gray so let's paint them gray it's i think it goes back to the days of like the prohibition because you'd get busted because they they just sit there and follow the whiskey mold they know exactly where you were um we're gonna have uh forces coming in from the different corners of this battlefield um attacking uh, the longest run probably this corner here i haven't kind of, i haven't worked it out all the way probably have the time Morden reinforcements coming here and then uh sorry you're really in reinforcements coming here to try to rescue their guys that are going to get surrounded here at the alamo um and then you're really into attacking from probably from three different directions against uh this collection of houses um got some good forests out here i really enjoyed that group of trees over there i was kind of like i'm gonna go all in on this forest um and i'm just the only thing it's, i'm concerned about and I'm, I'm saying in my head here is um the timing of it all and how many troops to put uh in this but you know if, if it if i lose it and it's a, a quick butt kicking i'm just gonna set up and do a second game this is a five-part scenario uh, the Aurelians did win the last game. They have uh, they've got two glory points from from winning. So uh, you know you've got a, it's at the end of five to see who actually wins the uh, the province they're fighting over, and uh, we'll go from there. And hopefully by the time you know this all gets going, and I start cranking on these six millimeter miniatures for the uh, Hail Caesar stuff, I'll have uh, that. Uh, map back from deep cut studios so i can really appreciate and uh what this campaign world actually looks like because james did a heck of a good job on it um yeah i might even film that upstairs to show you guys on at least the computer rendering but i can't wait to get it in like six by four uh that's foot uh in some kind of neoprene or something i can roll up so that's it the rivers are rivers can't cross without the bridge and uh, i got some stone walls out there simple map uh, it's going to be more just troops on the table doing doing some battles, and uh, looking forward to showing it to you guys. Here's a quick screenshot of uh, the map that James made, or at least this one for this chart campaign. It's really kind of cool, and it looks so much better than uh, the stuff I had before growing up. So uh, yeah, I'm really thrilled that he did this for me. Hope it looks cool to you guys. But uh, I appreciate you guys and i hope you're having a great week i'll get this game going as fast as possible and we'll knock it out uh, the buildings I'll, I'll talk about that in the video i think that's it so i will I keep bumping this road i will uh see you soon take care guys bye